Hi, Best Buds. It's Kathy with Kathy's Garden, and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today is hashtag Tag Me Tuesday. But first, let's have a shout out to Danny, Carol, Andrea, Candace, Mariette, and Lucy. I appreciate each and every one of you. So, as you can see right here, I have some coffee dyed tracing paper. Okay, looks just like that. Now, let me show you. This is what I purchased. Bring it up so you can see exactly what it looks like. I purchased mine from Walmart, but I do believe that you can find these um, in lots of different places. So let's just begin. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to cut your tracing paper into a square. Mine happened to be nine inches by nine inches, but you can make them any size that you want. However, it is very important that you do measure, huh, me measuring, right? But you measure whatever it is and you make yourself a square because if it's not a square, it's going to end up being a wonky envelope. We don't want any wonky envelopes today. So I know that I've done this many times in my videos before, but maybe some of you are new and this is how I do it. So I take my tip, oh, let's just pull this down so you can see, the tip of my paper and I put my ruler right at the tip right there and then I'm going to need to put it at the tip down below so let's see here my ruler isn't quite long enough so I'm hoping I'm guessing correctly and I'm going to make a little line right here just a light faint line <clears throat> and then we're going to do the same thing here I can, and mine's liable to be a wonky envelope because I'm guessing that that is, my ruler isn't long enough for this. All right, so we've got a little X right here. We're going to take the corner and we're going to fold it up to where the lines crisscross. And we're going to crease it. And then you're going to go over to the other side. You're going to bring this point up right here where it crisscrosses. And we're going to fold it like this. Then we're going to take this one, this point, we're going to fold it up. Now this is the time where I line this point, this corner, and this corner up on one of my grid marks. And then I bring the bottom up and I'm just going to bring it up. It's about, it's, it's about a half an inch, maybe a little less than a half an inch. If we can't get it to bend just a little bit better. Yeah, that's kind of it's a little more than half an inch. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as it's even on both sides. That's what's important. So you can bring it up however much you want, but try very hard to make it even. Then we're going to fold this down, this other corner. I'm going to fold it down. And once again, I need to line this up so I'm straight, as straight as I can be. And I'm going to try to get the two sides even. There we go. And just give it a good crease. Now that's our envelope. Super cool, right? I thought we might try another one just in case y'all missed that. Take your ruler, take a point. Put your ruler right at that point, <clears throat> I'm judging <clears throat> if that is straight or not, I don't think it's quite, maybe about right there, make a little line right here in the middle, then you're going to take this point and you're going to put your ruler right up against it and you're going to line it up with this one down here. Oh, that's about right. Hopefully it's not wonky. <laughs> All right, so then we take a point, doesn't matter which one, and you fold it up to that intersection of your lines. Do the opposite, just like this. Do another one. This time you're going to be lining these two points up with the line of the grid. And then we're going to be just simply 
holding this over. Once again, it doesn't really matter how high or how low you do it, but you do need to uh, hold it, but you do need to, you know, fold it. You don't need to just barely fold it. Making sure that it's as straight as you possibly can get it. And we're going to switch over here. And once again, I'm going to line this up with a line of my grid. And fold this over the best I can here, just like that. All right, not too wonky. They all turned out, they both turned out pretty good. So now what I want to do is, I think to help for you to be able to see what I'm going to do, I need to bring in my vintage photo and I'm simply going to start inking. So I'm going to ink my edges of my envelope. And right here, this is what I wanted to highlight so you can see what I'm going to do next. I need to highlight this so you can see right here. You can see that there's a, uh, let's open it up. At each of the corners of my fold, there's a little pie shape right here. This one you can see. This one probably not so much. Can you see that pie shape? Yes, yeah, sure you can. All right, so that's what we want to remove. Grabbing my scissors, we're going to remove this right here. And I'm taking out just a tiny bit more than the fold. So I'm removing the actual fold itself. As you can see, I took that completely out, right? Yeah, you can see that. There you go, you can really see that now. <clears throat> I'm gonna do it all the way around, taking the fold with it. So I'm not leaving that fold, I'm removing it. So around we go. I didn't do that very straight. And let's do this one. And then let's do this one. And this one. There we go. And then let's do the next one. <coughs> Coming it up. And we're going to remove our little folded area. This one. Okay. And then this one. And this one. Okay. So we've got that all removed. Now the next thing you'll probably want to do is remove your X. That, you, that helped you find the center to fold the points into. So I'm just removing my X. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time off camera and I'm going to finish inking all of this. Okay, I am actually going to ink the front and then on this side I need to ink the flap. All right, so I'll be right back after I finish that. All right, so as you can see, I've inked all around my envelope. Actually, looking at it, I needed to have inked this, and I forgot to ink that part. Oh my goodness, this one I did, this one I didn't. Okay, I'm going to take a second, I'm going to ink it. All right, I believe I did catch all of the areas I needed to ink. Now, the next thing I want to do <clears throat> is, let's look at this. So I ink this flap right here. So that's going to be my top flap. And right here at the bottom, right here, we need to fold that down a little bit. So I like to just fold it towards me just to make it level right here. Just so it looks something like this. All right. Then I fold it back on itself after I kind of know where I'm going to do it. Put that fold. Then, of course, I'm going to run my sponge right on it, and I'm going to glue that down. This little tiny piece, this 
corner, I'm going to glue it down. That's going to make it look like an envelope that we're used to seeing. A traditional envelope, you could say. Just like that. It does look like an envelope now, doesn't it? So let's do the same thing to this one. So I inked this one. So this is going to be my bottom right here. And I'm simply going to fold it over towards me and turn it back on itself. There we are. Now I'm going to glue it and I'll need to ink it as well. Okay, get that glued. And then run my sponge on it for just a moment. Alrighty, the next thing I want to do is I want to reinforce my tip right here of my flap. This is the bottom. This is the, the flap that comes down. And I want to reinforce the tip. So I've got a piece of coffee dyed coffee paper. And I'm simply going to take where the corner is right here. And I'm simply going to trim out a piece. Actually, I probably would do better if I got my long scissors. I also would do better if I went like this. Um, this is probably good enough. So that's, um, huh, that's a terrible way. That's about, well, it's not, it's a little over half. Here I go measuring again. <clears throat> I need to just stop measuring. That's what I need to do. <laughs> just stop it all together. Okay, I'm using that one as a template. Now, I'm simply going to remove my little lines that I made on there. I'm going to take my corner, and I'm going to glue it. I'm looking to see if it's inked up. Here, that side looks a lot better. I'm going to glue it on here. That's not at all even, which is really going to, going to bother me. So I'm going to see if I can't even that up. Yeah, that's a little better. I don't know. See, there we go measuring. It doesn't do me a bit of good to try to measure. Okay. There we go. Just make a little pie shape. I'm actually going to run my sponge on here because I do want it to be highlighted with a little bit of coffee. I'm not coffee. Ink. Vintage photo. This is the bottom right here. So on the inside of the flap, I'm going to add my little pie shape right there at the tip to reinforce the tip here. Just reinforce it. It's kind of flimsy because it's um, tracing paper. And so I want to have this reinforced. Okay, I've got that done. Not bad. That seems to be a little over. If it doesn't fit correctly, or I probably didn't put it on correctly, I'm just going to trim that off. So now, let's get it back together again. Now we look like this. Let's do the same thing over here. We're just going to add this piece right there on the tip. Probably way too much glue for that, but it will be fine. Dab it up a little bit. Okay. All right. Now what I want to do. I have some gesso. This is basic acrylic, basics acrylic. I will put this down below. I won't link it, but I'll list it down below. I bought it off of Amazon and Let's do one at a time. So I want to have the envelope open. This is the outside of the envelope. You can tell the outside from the inside because you folded this down on the inside and you added your piece right here to make it stronger. So this is the outside. I have a brush like this. You can use whatever brush you like to use. And I'm simply going to squeeze and usually this comes out way too much oh that needs to be cleaned up let me just quickly clean this mess up right here there we go i don't want any of that to get on 
or get in our gesso. So I'm just going to squeeze some gesso out here. I think you can see it there. Sure you can. And maybe I might need a little more, maybe not, but <clears throat> I'll start with that amount. And I've got some on my brush here, and I'm simply going to brush it on here and there. And I'm really brushing it out. I'm not leaving a big glob. I'm brushing it out. I'm getting it all brushed out just wherever you would like to put it. It does not matter. Just add some on. Okay. Now let's see, maybe a little bit over here. Oh, we need some on our flap. Oh, that's a lot on our flap. Okay. Now the inside, which is right here on the flap, you're going to see the inside part. I'm going to add just a little bit on the inside. Okay. Let's switch to our next one. And once again, check to see. This is the inside, so I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the outside first. And I'm just adding, well, I put way too much gesso on there. I don't know what I was thinking. This is my flap. This is the body of it. You know where the address goes and the stamp. A little bit more over here. They're all going to be a little different because, you know, you're putting your gesso here and there and it's not all going to be the same. And that's okay. It doesn't need to be the same. And let's turn it over. This is the inside of your flap. So I'm going to add just a little bit more right here on the inside. Maybe take it down into the inside of the envelope. I'm just brushing it out like this. Okay, now what I want to do, I'll put this in my water here. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> let's turn it back over. I really wanted to save that because I might need it again here in just a minute. I think I do. So I'm going to take it off of here. And I'm going to literally just put it on this little piece. And maybe it will stay good. I'll set it over here to the side. Hopefully it won't fall off on my floor. Oh, oh it almost did. Okay, let's move it somewhere else. How about over there? And I think I would like to... Just wipe this up just a little bit, you guys. That doesn't look very good, does it? Mm -mm. Let's get this wiped out. All right, now we're ready for the next step. The next thing I would like to do is I'm going to bring in my <clears throat> word stamp. And that's this one right here. It's my paragraph stamp. I love it. It's called Faded text background and its stamp abilities and I do believe it's still available. I'm going to grab my vintage photo and I'm going to ink up okay I'm going to ink this up hopefully I can get this inked up. I might have to grab my um, new ink pad. Let's see if we can get this done. And we're just going to stamp the flap. And the sides. It's pretty with the brown. It really is. These are kind of um, the ones that I'm making today these vintage envelopes with the ephemera. They're very fallish. The choice of my brown ink right here and we're going to be using other stamps in just a little bit. It will, it just makes it a little more fallish. Now I'm going to stamp the inside as well. So, 
there we go. That looks, that looks really, really pretty. It's just faint. And, you know, the name of the stamp is faded, so it's not going to be real strong. That's not the way that stamp uh, is. So, here's our second one. I don't know why, but it keeps looking like there's stuff on here. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go ahead and let's get this all filled up with ink. Now, on the other one I didn't, but this one I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to place my stamp right here so it's more going the correct direction. Then I'm going to turn it around and I'll put this, the body of it this way so it's in the correct direction. So if that's something that bothers you, I didn't do it with the first one, but if it bothers you, then that's what you can do. You can just turn your envelope around and stamp it in the direction in which the words are. A little bit more ink. And then I want some more on this because you see a little bit of the flap, a little bit. You see the top part. Alrighty, so we've got that done. That's looking super cool. I'm really enjoying how that looks. So then what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead, I think it's time that we need to glue this shut. So simply by placing the tip that we reinforce the flap, we reinforce that, fold in your sides, pull up the bottom like this, and then we're going to add glue to this portion. We're going to add glue here and here. Do not add glue here in the center, okay, or you would glue your envelope shut. We don't want to do that. So we're just adding glue, and I'm using my art glitter glue. You use the glue of your choice. I'm just going to add my glue right here, and then I'm just simply going to fold it up. Fold it up, making, making our envelope. Just using a little bit of paper towel to dab up anything that pops out, any of the glue that pops out. There. There's our envelope. Very nice. Oh, very nice indeed. All right, set that aside. Now let's get the next one with our flap at the top reinforcement <clears throat> we're going to glue right down here at the bottom I'm not gluing here sometimes it's easy if you easier if you put your fingers here then that means you're not going to glue there so it kind of helps the mind remember sometimes we get to crafting and we just get carried away because boy i do and that's when i start making mistakes Alrighty, so let's Fold the sides in, and then fold the bottom up. There we are. Just as simple as that. Getting my little piece of my paper towel. Just dabbing it, just to make sure that there isn't any glue seeping out. It's going to get stuck somewhere. Okay, and we've got our second envelope, just like that. The next thing I want to do is I want to bring my envelopes in. Now I'm not, my flaps are up because we're going to do a little extra stamping and if I have my flap down like this, this might cause me a problem even though yes that's already there right that folded part but that's not as as um, thick as what we added here because we added coffee dyed paper right there so that's just a little thicker. So I have different stamps. I have some leaf stamps I think I have leaf stamps. The one I used for my example is not a leaf stamp. It was almost more like a dried piece of mm, uh, uh, stems of leaves is basically what it was. And let's see, what do I want? I really, 
Oh, I just don't know. They're all so pretty. Let's try this one. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my vintage photo. I'm sticking with my brown. Now, you can do different colors. You don't have to stick with the colors I'm using. You can use whatever color you want. So, just getting some ink on here. And I'm going to place this stamp more on the left-hand side. Actually, I might do a couple. So I'll do one going this way. Oh, that's pretty. And then I'll stick with the, sta the same stamp. And I'll do it this way. Something like that. Oh, that's really sweet. That looks very fall, doesn't it? Set this aside. Let's bring in our next one. Now let's change up our stamp. This one, I love that. I love the shape. That's going to be, that's going to have more contrast like this one. See how this one is like this one because of the, the dark and the dark here? Or maybe it'd be reversed. This one would be more of the coffee dyed. Let's try this one since it's different. Let's show something different. And I bought these stamps. Someone's going to ask me. I bought them at the thrift store, you guys. I happened to be there at the right time. I think that's what thrifting's all about. If you're there at the right time and uh, you happen upon something that you could use, then it's your, <laughs> it's meant for you or your lucky day or however you want to look at it. But it is kind of um, luck of the draw. As you may say, a look of a draw. Now, I am actually going to fold this down because I only want part of it. And I'm only going to do it right up here. So I'm not going to catch that point that I was talking about. But I just want to catch just a little bit right up at the top. So my leaf is going off of the paper. That one's pretty. Now, you do see the difference between how this one has a lot of open space and this one you know, that one doesn't, but oh, they're still, I don't even know which one I like better because they're both quite beautiful. And I see I've got some ink here, so let's just wipe this up before it gets everywhere. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to bring in my stays on. I did order some more stays on. Of course, it's not here yet. I just ordered it. And with that said, I hope that this, you know, has enough ink left in it that we can do this project. I'm going to lift that flap up again and this is a small paragraph stamp. Years and years and years ago I bought this. I don't know where it came from but maybe you could type in small paragraph stamp. Crafting supplies, something like that. Maybe you can see if you could find something like that if you're interested. But all I want to do is I just going to ink up part of the stamp because I want this to be my address. I mean not my ad yeah my address. So there it is. <laughs> going to address from you know how the envelope's going to get there. We're just making it like an envelope that you would send out. Of course you would not send this envelope out. I'm not sure it would make it. It's not very sturdy for the mail. So we're just making it for our junk journal project. Now we've got it looking like this. I'm going to bring in a few things. I'm going to bring in some stamps right here. And these are from my porch prints. So that's where they're from. That's a red one. That one's really different, isn't it? Let's move this so you can see. That's really pretty. Here's a blue one. That's a little softer. Here's a brown one. That one's pretty. I like that. Here's a kind of a bluish teal one. That's very attractive. They're all, all of these are beautiful. I love, I love these My Porch prints because they really look like vintage stamps. I think I would like to choose those two and I am simply going to glue that on now. So using my art glitter glue 
I'm just going to add it right here to the corner where a stamp goes. And I'm going to get my red one here. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a little piece of that net. I bought it years ago. They don't even offer it anymore at the place I bought it. But I did recently um, get some off of Amazon that has polka dots instead of the, the diamond shape. So it's similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. And what I want to do here is I just want to catch it on the corner. Just adding a little, you know, something, something to it. Making it extra special. So I'm simply going to put my glue right there on the corner. I'm looking for my little... Um, my little, here it is. This is what I'm looking for. My little thing that I touch with my hot glue. Now I use hot glue because it's quick, it's easy, and it's great for videos. You can use fabric tack or whatever glue that you choose will be perfect. I use the hot glue because it's really great for making videos because it's permanent and it's when it's stuck, it's stuck, and it's not going to move around on me. Finishing this off right here with the glue and pressing down. Now I'm going to trim this out. So bringing in my scissors, and I'm simply trimming my net off of my envelope. Being careful not to cut my envelope because I'd cut a hole in it if I did. So I don't want to do that. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look how pretty that's looking. Oh my goodness. Alrighty. So now let's do this one. So all we did was we took our piece and we laid it at the corner. I added just a little bit at the corner here of glue, kind of in an L shape, and then I pressed it down. I'm pressing it down because of the hot glue. If you're using fabric tack, you don't need to, well, you might need to press it down to get the, the net or whatever lace you're using. You could use flat lace. You don't have to use net. I just chose net because I thought it was... Um, it was pretty. You could still see through it. You could still see the stamping that we did, the address. It just is kind of like a veil. It just gives a little illusion. Alrighty, that one's pretty too. That one's uh, a bigger corner. I took out a bigger, laid over a bigger corner, laid the net over a big, bigger portion of the envelope. Well, that's what I'm trying to say. And trimming it out. All right. We are looking fantastic. How we look. Yeah, we look great. Now, how are we going to keep this closed, right? Because look, it's this one's already creased funny. It's going wonky on me. So where's my little dish? Here it is. Now, I had stamps in here, but then also I had some labels. And my labels are from J. Lee Lou, and these happen to be long labels, long slender labels. And I'm going to use them as a type of tuck spot right here. So let's see which one I want to use. I really like this one. Okay, I want that one. Whoa. <laughs> and let's see here. I use this one in my videos, I mean in my example. I think I'll use this one. So all we want to do is, it's probably going to help if I grab a <clears throat> paper clip and I paper clip my flap down so it doesn't go popping up. And I'm going to take my label and on the two ends I'm going to add just a little bit of glue. So getting my fabric tech, I'm making sure that's going to be correct. Adding just a little bit of glue here and here. Then I'm going to hold my flap down and I'm going to pop my label on just like that. 
Okay, hold it down a little bit. Now I don't want it to be to where the tip comes through the bottom, but I do need to catch enough of the tip to be able to hold it in place. And that is mainly why we secured our tip with a little bit of coffee paper, coffee dyed, copy paper, <laughs> coffee dyed, copy paper. All right, so that holds our flap closed. Let's do that right here. So simply adding a little bit of glue on this side and then on this side and laying it on the tip just like that. There we go. We've got it closed. Now I talked about putting some ephemera in here. So let's make something special. There's one more thing I need to do before we look towards our ephemera. We need to turn it over to the this side. And we need to add a little bit of bling, don't you think, guys? Now, either I could add a little bit of pearls or maybe a little bit of gold. I think the gold today. Now, I used pearls on the my example. This is a darker like that, but I don't think I want that today. I think I really want to stick with this gold. So adding a few. I'm just going to add my line of glue and just lay my bling right on the top. Press it down just a little bit. Oh goodness, isn't that cute? That is so, so pretty. And they sound so great, don't they? Because it being made from tracing paper and has that awesome sound. There we go. There's that bling. So cute. Now let's talk about our ephemera. So I have another piece of coffee dyed coffee, uh, tracing paper. Sorry, tracing paper. And I just want to get a little bit of this. So I think since I've already, this is just a scrap, since I've already got it cut going this way, cutting into it, let's slip it in like this and let's see if we can continue that down and maybe use these two pieces as part of our ephemera, or shall we say the base of our ephemera. If I hold this like this, <clears throat> Let's get it folded, Kathy. I fold it like this. Yeah. That will still fit into my envelope. And if I fold this one, that's going to be too long, but I'm going to fold it this way. Well, maybe it's going to be too long. not it's gonna fit in just fine maybe I'm gonna add something else to this now I have some coffee dyed doilies and these happen to be approximately eight inches and I'm going to take my let's see let's get rid of these for just a second we'll set these over to the side let's work on this Let's work on this long one first. I'm going to lay this down like this and somewhere in the middle, something like that, I'm going to fold in my sides of my doily like this. Okay. And then I'm going to fold it again. First, before I do that, I think I'm going to glue it. Now, the ephemera that I made for my example was not as wide, so my doilies touch. Now, the one that we're going to make in just a minute, I really know it's not going to touch because it's much wider. But I'm just using scraps. So, you use your scraps, and maybe they'll come together, and maybe they won't. I'm going to have an example of it coming together, and then one here that's not together either way it's going to work so let's refold that just like this just a little bit a 
Now I'm actually going to trim this just a little bit. So I'm going to bring my guillotine in and I'm just trimming it so it's not sticking out so far from my doily. Just a little bit like that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add just a little bit of glue right inside to hold that doily down. I should have done that before, but that's okay. We can do it this way. Just like that. Now let's do the other one before we do anything else to our examples. Let's do another one. Let's bring this one in. This is the one we had. This is my doily. Lay it right down on here like this. Fold this in. I'm going to fold this in. This one probably needs to be a little thinner for what I want to do with it. So, I'm going to make it a little thinner. Let's see if that's thin enough. Well, that'll do the trick. We don't need to make it any thinner than that. Alrighty, so we're folding this. I'm going to fold this, just like that. Now, this is where I probably should have glued it before, when I said, oh, I should have glued that, and then I stuck my glue up underneath. So let's just go ahead and add some glue to the inside of the doily, and then lay this in here, like this. Back to where it was. I gotta get it straight in here. That would help. Okay. So we've glued that down. Now we're going to glue our doily down. Now we're only gluing it right here. We're not gluing it all over. Just right here. Right there. Kind of where the fold is. Right here. Got where the fold is. Okay. And sticky. I'm going to let that dry for just a second. So now we're back over here. And actually, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this off just a little. My corner rounder would not trim that. And I'm going to ink this up a tiny bit. Just I'm going to do it like this. This doily has interesting marks on it, doesn't it? Right here. It's because I hung it over a plastic basket that had um, the little grid marks on it. And it actually picked up those grid marks. That's really pretty cool. Now I think we can fold this now. Let's fold this in half. This. And I'm just running my sponge over it to give it a little color, more color than it already has. <laughs> I love that vintage look. Alrighty, so the next thing I want to do is I want to bring in that piece of paper that has that little bit of <clears throat> gesso on it. And I really need to uh, dab this off. I don't need that much water on it. And then, once again, we're just going to do here and there. We're not going to be, you know, doing it everywhere. But I do want a little bit here and there. careful I'll have just just enough hopefully just enough I won't use too much on this one okay let's do this side let's 
use the rest of it. It just adds, just so just adds a, a little bit of a little bit of something else to it. I mean you're just we're just layering different things. Now what I want to do is I'm going to fold this back and we used uh, we used this stamp and we used this stamp, didn't we? So let's go ahead and bring in our vintage photo back and let's load up our stamp and let's just stamp it just like that. Oh, so pretty. So fall, right? That is really gorgeous. Now, you know what I also noticed is that this is a little off kelter here, but that's okay. I'm going to take a good size corner off and we'll switch because the other one has this one, this stamp. So let's put that there. Let's see if I can get a little bit more ink on here. All right. And the next thing I want to do, this just keeps going, doesn't it? Huh, going, the Energizer Bunny. Let's bring it, stays on, back just a second. And let's bring that little word stamp and I'm really going to just get a little bit of that stamp and just press it right there like that. Just a tiny bit, not a lot. i to sit that somewhere. My desk is getting covered up with many things. Okay, I kind of like that it's a little bigger on this one. Alright, so putting my ink away Goodness gracious, setting my stamps over here on the side. Grabbing my other dish, if I can get it out from under everything. Goodness gracious, there's so much happening here. We want to not look at that mess. All right, so now <clears throat> we have our little piece here, and we have our... <clears throat> This one goes with this one, right? And we're going to open it up like this. And right here, we have made ourselves a little pocket. Well, we almost gessoed it close. Made ourselves a little, we almost gessoed this one close too. There we go. A little pocket. Look at that. So we have two little journaling cards inside. Fold up nicely. You could journal on the back of this. You could journal on the sides. You can definitely journal on your cards. And then this one goes right inside of our vintage envelope very easily right there. So there's that one. And then this one right here looks like this. And this is, no, 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 did I, did I really do that? No, that's right. No, I used this. I used a different stamp, you guys. What a ding dong. Okay, guys. Well, my my uh, oh, my um leaves don't match. I should have used. I should have used this one, but I used this one. It's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Let's open it up. You got the idea. You definitely got the idea. I've got these journaling cards. These are from Sam Pool. I'll have to look and see what the other ones are from. Once again, my gesso. Push them in. So they're just like that. Oh my goodness, I love, I love that piece of ephemera right there. And then we're just going to pop it into our envelope. And there we go. So we've made these two together. And this is the one that I made by myself as an example. It looks just like that. See, I was trying to say they look, they're kind of like stems of, of leaves right there. And then this is the back. Open it up. And then this is its little piece of ephemera. And you open this one up. And we've got our journaling cards right here. Look at the kitty. 
Oh my goodness, you guys. I love making these with you. I hope that you have enjoyed this project. And if you have, please give me a thumbs up. I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there, guys. Bye now. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you about Tag Me Tuesday. It's a Facebook group. I have on um, a link down below. And you need to accept the rules to be kind to everyone and that there's no selling on that site. And if you accept the rules and you could share your Tag Me Tuesday project with everyone. Because even though we're doing the same project, it all comes out different because our personalities shine through. Ah, I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you all about Tag Me Tuesday. But if you stayed to the end, you found out. All right, you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye now.